you did or you did admit that you didn't see COVID hanging such having such an impact. I can speak. I can do it. Uh, but you did say online sales growth would accelerate relative uh, to in-store and bankruptcies would also increase. I guess just sort of recap um, how 2020 has shaken out versus what you anticipated coming into this year and how some of those trends are going to carry us into the new one. Well, I had five predictions last year that came true despite everything else because I'd already said that bankruptcies and store closings would accelerate. I'd already said the rate of growth online was going to actually increase, not just the amount online, but the rate of growth online. I'd already said that grocery was going to actually really go online for the first time and that it would be crystal clear that there were only 278 real malls in America that could grow and be strong and that inflation would be totally missing in action. And I can't believe when I look back that I made those five predictions without a clue that COVID was actually going to cause any real disruption in U.S. retail, because I made those in December of last year. And though I'd heard of COVID, I sure didn't really expect COVID to like take over retailing, but it did. And so this year, I think all of those things are going to happen again, believe it or not. And then I also think that apparel and accessories will go crazy starting in about April, because I think the roaring 20s really are coming. I know we're saying that way too much, but I think it's true. And I still think we'll see online and omni-channel um, go away as a name, and we'll just call everything either digital or physical. Mm. So there'll be plenty going on next year, including the consumer getting back out for lunch, dinner, bars, concerts, and all that stuff. But they're still going to be buying a lot of home goods. Yeah. Matt, I want to get your thoughts on this, especially since I realize that a lot of the parcel carriers right now are pretty overwhelmed in terms of just how many packages are in their system because of all that buying online right now. The, the Postal Service being obviously, uh, I think, the key point of focus uh, right now. Um, but I'll tell you, I've, my local mall... I've been there a couple times in the last couple weeks. It's been really busy. There have been lines because of the capacity issues to get into some of those stores. Similar situation at my local Target where he couldn't get a parking spot. Are people starting to come out? Is brick and mortar really dead here? Or are we going to see a resurgence on that front as well? Brick and mortar is not dead. Um, and, you know, I was at North Park last Saturday and had to wait online to get into the new Italy store. I, I don't usually want to wait on a line, but my wife was intent on going. And uh, and so I, I would say, you know, the malls that and, and I think Jan has it right, whether it's, you know, 247 or whatever the number is, you know, the top the top two to three hundred malls are going to be winners in what happens here. And, and again, again, I think Jan is right in that it's. It, on some levels, we, we shouldn't talk about omni-channel. It's, it's really the basic tenets of, you know, convenience um, and great product innovated in, in a way that gets to the consumer at great prices. But the changes that have happened um, during 2020, uh, accelerated by COVID and by the social unrest, have been dramatic. And so that change, which was coming uh, and was moving slowly and methodically, has gotten like kind of an electric shock um, that you you get in, uh, in in a medical moment um, to kind of move forward. And so you're going to see retail sales grow. Um, it's going to continue to grow. Um, it's partially now because people aren't traveling and doing other things. So you're going to also see retail sales grow more in the suburbs than in the cities. You're going to see retail sales grow more in home goods because retail follows how people live their lives and how people are living their lives are at home. And so they're they're investing in their kids or investing in, you know, things the kids play with imaginatively or other ways. They're investing in building out those home offices, building out those home gyms. I mean, we just saw the acquisition of, you know, another um, group of home equipment by, yeah. you know, Peloton. So there, there's a lot that's going on that's changing. But retail is alive and well and people are spending. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.